This is Apollo Control at 162 hours 28 minutes. The Apollo 11 spacecraft Columbia is 138,674 nautical miles from Earth, approaching at a velocity of 4,692 feet per second. Spacecraft weight 26,000 pounds. Flight Director Glenn Lenny has just completed a status check with all of the flight controllers here. We've gotten very good reports from all of them. The retrofire officer reports that on the present trajectory, Columbia's entry angle is minus 6.56 6 degrees. The nominal entry angle is minus 6.51 degrees. Retro expects uh, entry velocity to be 36,194 feet per second. He calls these entry conditions excellent. Flight Dynamics Officer says the tracking is looking very good. Guidance Navigation and Control Officer reports the passive thermal control uh, stable, operating very well. The reaction control system looking very good. ECOM, the Electrical Environmental and Communications Officer, reports uh, cryogenics well balanced, the environmental control system uh, looking good, all of the antennas and the power status in good shape. And the flight surgeon reports the crew sleeping soundly. Uh, his data indicates all three crewmen were asleep by 160 hours 42 minutes and he reports they've taken no medication and recovery uh, reports the weather looks very good in the recovery area and all uh, conditions there ready for a successful recovery this is Mission Control Houston This is Apollo Control at 163 hours 28 minutes. Apollo 11 is 135,920 nautical miles from Earth. Velocity 4,758 feet per second. Crew's been asleep almost three hours now. All systems still performing well. This is Mission Control Houston. This is Apollo Control at 164 hours 28 minutes. Apollo 11 is 133,131 nautical miles from Earth, approaching at a velocity of 4,827 feet per second. Crew is asleep. Performance of all systems continues to be normal. We're 30 hours, 34 minutes, 37 seconds away from entry of Apollo 11 into the Earth's atmosphere. This is Mission Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control at 165 hours, 28 minutes. Apollo 11 is 130,306 nautical miles from the Earth. Velocity 4,900 feet per second. Crew is still asleep, and all systems are still performing well. This is Mission Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control at 166 hours, 28 minutes. Apollo 11 is 127,431 nautical miles from the Earth. Velocity 4,975 feet per second. Crew still sleeping, all systems still normal. The Weather Bureau's Space Flight Meteorology Group reported today that weather conditions for the landing of Apollo 11 tomorrow are expected to be acceptable. 
Some, some showers have been reported near the landing area, but these are expected to move westward, leaving the recovery area with partly cloudy skies, east northeasterly winds 10 to 15 knots, and four foot seas. Although tropical storms will not affect weather in the landing area, the Apollo 11 crew should get a good view of the tropical storm Viola, located in the western North Pacific, and also the remains of tropical storm Claudia, located southeast of Hawaii. This is Mission Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control at 167 hours, 28 minutes. Apollo 11 is 124,520 nautical miles from the Earth, approaching at a velocity of 5,055 feet per second. All still going well aboard Apollo 11. Maintaining a stable passive thermal control mode, nose pointed toward the Earth, rotating three revolutions per hour. This is Mission Control Houston. This is Apollo Control at 168 hours, 28 minutes. Apollo 11's distance from the Earth is 121,550 nautical miles. Velocity, 5,138 feet per second. All systems still performing well, the crew still asleep. The clock here in the control center shows 26 hours, 34 minutes, 37 seconds until uh, entry into the Earth's atmosphere. This is Mission Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control at 169 hours, 28 minutes. Apollo 11 is 118,542 nautical miles from Earth, approaching at a velocity of 5,225 feet per second. Crew is still asleep. Performance of all systems continues to be normal. Mid-course correction number six, which was scheduled for an elapsed time of 172 hours, has been canceled. Traject the trajectory is such that it will not be required. From the Manned Space Flight Network, we have a report of a contribution to the Apollo 11 mission from a 10-year-old boy in Guam. The uh, Guam tracking station is receiving telemetry uh, from this mission. Had a problem with one of its antennas, a bearing. The bearing uh, was replaced with the assistance of a 10-year-old boy named Greg Force, who had an arm small enough that he could work through a two and a half inch diameter hole to uh, pack the new bearing. We're now showing uh, entry, interface with the Earth's atmosphere, 25 hours, 33 minutes, 30 seconds from now. And the green team of flight controllers led by Cliff Charlesworth is now uh, taking over from Glenn Lenny and his black team of flight controllers. This is Mission Control Houston. Network. Network. I don't have Network. Uh, speak. I don't have uh, speak on Goss two. You're gonna have to do it on Goss four. Okay, we'll do it to Goss four then. Thank you. Surgeon flight. Are they still asleep? Or the Are they still asleep, or do you see anybody stirring yet? It uh, looks like that they're still sleeping. Let me uh, check the back room on the uh, respiration trace. Okay. Airmen. Flight surgeon. Go. I think they're still asleep, okay. all three of them. Thank you. This is Apollo Control at 170 hours, 28 minutes. The flight surgeon reports that all three crew members uh, apparently are still sleeping. And there are uh, no immediate plans to awaken them at this time. Uh, Apollo 11 is presently 115,470 nautical miles from the Earth, and the speed is up to 5,317 feet per second. Uh, in about 
four hours at uh, 174 hours 24 minutes ground elapsed time uh, Apollo 11 will be in terms of distance halfway home at that point it will be 102,888 nautical miles from the moon and 102,888 nautical miles from the earth all systems on the spacecraft continue to function normally at this time Uh, the spacecraft weight is almost an even 26,000 pounds. At uh, 170 hours, 29 minutes, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Flight Network. Flight Network. Uh, we're having problems with Madrid's telemetry computer, so we'll have to get telemetry from a 30-foot station. Can you copy that, Inco and Ica? We copy, fine. Flight network. Go ahead. Go ahead. The uh, Madrid telemetry computer is back up now. Okay. GNC flight. Fly GNC. Stay on. Turn this thing off. What's your roll rate? It's, uh, about normal. It's about normal. 310. Okay. What is this point seven I see in GNN? Point six now. GNC fly. Go ahead. What is this point six or point seven I'm reading? Can't really say. Can't really say. Let's see if I can figure it out. Fly GNC. Go GNC. Yeah, he's rolling at 3 tenths. That A dot won't be correct until he gets within the dead bands. The 30 degree dead band. If you notice and roll, he's out by uh, some 118 degrees. Okay. The GNN does some approximations in, in its rate uh, stuff based on expected thruster firing. Since we've got the thrusters off, it's a little messed up unless it's inside the dead band. Okay, thank you. Fly, don't fly. Go fly. Go fly. No mid course six. Is that right? It is looking like that right now. Retro will give you the numbers. Flying retro. Go. Okay. Based on the latest update we got here, that uh, mid course seven shows no correction. We're at a minus six five five flight path angle right now. We're inside the corner. And as far as we can see right now, there's no need for mid-course six. We're taking one more. We're in. taking one more in. We'll check that. But I think it's safe to say right now, based on what we see, that there's no necessity for either six or seven. Okay. Which says something for the retro yesterday, right? It says something for Mr. Collins, Roger, trimming out those residuals. Isn't that nice that we trim residuals? Capcom FAO, my loop. Flight network. Go network. We see, Go network. We see a voice subcarrier on a downlink now. Okay. Surgeon flight. Go flight. Any of them awake? awake? I think they're all three awake. Uh, uh, Cliff, I'm sitting here looking at their at their uh, and they, they all seem to be moving about quite a bit now. Okay. I think it's for real. Go. Light side of Go. I can get a checkpoint. Go ahead. Flight retro. Go retro. Go retro. I get off the car so for a couple of minutes. Okay. Light side of checkpoint complete. Okay. Capcom flight. Go ahead, flight. 
Do you have everything you need when they get up here and call us? I think so. I've got uh, oh, four or five items to uh, send up, but nothing that's in any hurry. Three pads, consumables, flight plan update, weather. That's about it. Okay, guidance flight. Guidance flight. I assume you don't need the uplink state vector. Uh, we'd like to fly. State vector only, huh? Yes. Okay. You, do you have it ready? Okay. This is Apollo Control at 170 hours, 54 minutes. The uh, flight surgeon reported a few minutes ago that uh, telemetry data now indicates all three crewmen are awake after uh, about 10 hours of rest. We expect we will be hearing from them shortly. Okay. Apollo 11 at this time is 114,146 nautical miles from the Earth, and the spacecraft velocity is 5,359 feet per second. A press conference with the principal, principal investigators for lunar samples is scheduled to begin uh, in about uh, four or five minutes. And during that press conference, we will tape record any conversations with the crew and play them back following. At uh, 170 hours, 55 minutes, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Flight guide. Go. We have a load out there. Okay. Capcom, GNC, I'm up. Retro flight. Retro flight. Do you have a preliminary entry pad? Uh, the preliminary entry pad has been given to Capcom. Okay, fine. This is Apollo Control at 172 hours, 20 minutes. During the uh, press conference, we established contact with the crew. Uh, capsule communicator Owen Garriott put in a call at 171 hours, about uh, 10 minutes, after the surgeon reported biomedical data showed all three crewmen awake. Uh, Neil Armstrong responded, uh, we have received a status report from the crew. We also passed up uh, the information, preliminary information that they will use in the re-entry tomorrow. And uh, gave them a weather report for the prime recovery area in the Pacific uh, landing zone. Uh, we'll play back about uh, 12 minutes of taped conversation that we've accumulated to date and uh, then stand by for any further live comments uh, from the spacecraft. Search and play. That go flight? You're pretty sure they're stirring around here? Yes, uh -huh. I think they're awake and moving around. Okay, Capcom flight. Go ahead and find the up. Watch see if anybody's up up there. Okay. Apollo 11, uh, Houston. Apollo 11, uh, Houston. Are you up and at them yet? Over. Oh, we're up at me, Sean. Eyeballing the uh, measurements. Uh, 11 uh, Houston, uh, got your signals loud and clear here. Uh, how are things this morning? Over. Can you read us, uh, Sean? Uh, Roger, uh, loud and clear, 11. Okay, uh, everything be all right here so far. We have been looking in the cockpit, yes. Uh, we've been spinning our... I'm looking outside the cockpit. Uh, Roger, 11. Uh, you're breaking up just a little bit there, Neil. Your signals are loud, but uh, uh, breaking up occasionally. Uh, your spacecraft all looks good here from the ground. Uh, we uh, noticed you stirring around the cockpit, and I uh, thought we'd give you a call. Over. Good morning. Uh, 11, uh, Houston, uh, we do have a few items for you here, uh, entry pads, consumables, and so forth. After you've had a chance to uh, get organized, uh, whenever you're ready to uh, uh, start on a few of these items, uh, we'll read them up to you. Over. Okay, stand by. Go ahead, Owen. I've got the book out ready to copy. Okay, Buzz. Uh, on your uh, flight plan uh, uh, items, a few updates first of all. Uh, we've uh, canceled uh, mid-course number six. Uh, just uh, remaining, uh, remain in uh, PTC. Uh, give you a little more time this morning. Uh, second item on the flight plan is uh, we're ready for a bat B charge uh, anytime uh, you want to put it on the line. And uh, third item, uh, uh, we'd like a wastewater dump uh, a little differently this time. We'd like to do it on our mark from the ground. 
Uh, the uh, PTC is a little bit ragged, and we would like to uh, make the water dump at a time which we think will hold it in its uh, proper uh, uh, configuration. So uh, it looks like we'll uh, have a desirable opportunity coming along in uh, between 15 and 20 minutes. And uh, on our mark, uh, we would like to have a wastewater dump uh, down to uh, about 40%. I'll give you a more accurate uh, uh, level uh, for the water dump a little later. Over. Houston, uh, stand by just a moment here till we get out of the uh, no position on the antenna. Uh, 11, uh, Houston, uh, we're over on uh, Omni Delta now. I think we can read you better. Did you get all those uh, first three items on your flight plan update? Over. All right, got the course correction uh, canceled, battery B charge, and uh, uh, water dump uh, on your uh, call. Over. Uh, that's right, Buzz. And uh, last item here, uh, we do request that uh, we do a P-52, uh, even uh, though we're not doing the mid-course correction, and uh, we'll uh, suggest you get to that after the uh, waste water dump has been complete. Uh, we also have a state vector update for you, if you can uh, give us a poo and accept. Over. Okay, you have the disc now. Uh, Roger. Uh, we'll be uh, sending that up. and. Uh, I'll give you your consumables update now. Uh, it's uh, for a time of 170 hours. Okay. Uh, your RCS total is a minus 3.5%. Alpha is minus 14.5. Bravo plus 7. Charlie minus 4.5. Delta minus 3. Hydrogen total is minus 1. And your oxygen total is plus a 2.4. Over. Roger, copy those. And onboard readouts, uh, D is uh, 69, C is 73, B is, uh, let me uh, start over again. Okay, A is 51, and B is 62, C is 63, and D is 59, over. Uh, Roger, Levin. Uh, copy those, and uh, we've uh, checked them here on the ground also. Uh, one correction to my last transmission. Uh, we would like that P-52 uh, prior to the uh, waste water dump, uh, which is uh, coming up in about uh, 30 minutes from now. Uh, will that uh, be possible? Over. Oh, yeah, we'll take care of that. Roger. And uh, if you're ready for an entry pad, I'll read that up to you now also, Eleven. Ready to copy. Okay, entry pad is uh, area mid pack. 359er, 153001. 194463-267-1102-172-167. 361-94-655-118-75-362-75-1905-03-03-0028 DL and VL, all four are not applicable. D zero four zero 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 two one zero 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 one eight zero three three eight zero eight two one four four two nine or three two three eight zero foresight star is Scorpio Theta. Up three one four, right three four, lift vector up. Comments. Entry data assumes no mid course maneuvers. Your Earth entry minus three zero minute horizon check. One nine or four plus three three plus zero three. 
Our pitch is 297. This assumes an entry rest mat. Your GDC aligned stars are Deneb and Vega. Roll pitch yaw 078 233 340. Read back over. Roger, uh, mid back uh, entry pad uh, 359 advance the time on that uh, water dump uh, to about uh, 171 plus uh, 30 uh, just after we uh, reacquire on the next uh, Omni uh, and uh, as I mentioned it'll be down to 45 percent is the uh, new quantity also we're standing by for your CMRTS ejector temperature uh, readout over I'm not certain you copied my last transmission as we were uh, just in the process of switching omnis. Uh, we'd like to advance the time on that water dump uh, to about five minutes from now, and uh, we'll give you a precise mark on the time to start the dump. And uh, we are standing by for a readout on your CMRCS ejector temperatures. Over. Okay, Owen, well, we're standing by for your mark and uh, stand by for the readout. Roger. Yes, Apollo 11, are you ready to... Uh Copy, inject your temperatures, I'll read them in uh, volts. Uh, it's a firm, go ahead, Mike. Okay, 2-4 is reading 4.7 volts. 2-5 is reading 4.8 volts. 1-2 is reading uh, 4.8 volts. 1-4 is reading 4.8. Point six, four point five, and two one, four point eight. Over. Uh, Eleven, uh, Houston. Uh, Roger those. Uh, got them all. Apollo Eleven, uh, Houston. We're ready to start your uh, wastewater dump at this time. Over. Roger dumping. Uh, 
11 uh, Houston, uh, we show you... Houston Apollo 11, we've jumped to 45% or stopping now. Do you concur? Uh, Roger 11, we concur. for the uh, recovery area anytime uh, you'd like to hear about it. Over. Go ahead. Uh, 11 uh, Houston, uh, present forecast uh, shows acceptable conditions in your recovery area. Uh, 2,000 foot scattered, high scattered. Uh, wind from uh, zero 070 zero degrees, uh, one three knots. Visibility at 10 miles. And uh, sea state about uh, four feet. Uh, the uh, forecast uh, yesterday showed a, a tropical storm, Claudia, uh, some 500 to 1,000 miles east of Hawaii. Uh, the uh, the uh, pictures from uh, Earth satellites uh, taken yesterday afternoon, afternoon uh, showed uh, Claudia dissipating, so uh, this appears to be even uh, less a factor than it was before. Uh, your uh, recovery area is now uh, believed to be just a little ways north of the uh, intertropical convergence zone, uh, which you can probably see uh, when you uh, uh, look out your uh, windows there. Uh, well, yesterday there was also a report of a tropical storm, Viola, uh, further to the west. Uh, its present location is uh, some 1,000 miles uh, east of the Philippines and uh, moving northwest. Uh, tropical storm uh, Viola has been intensifying and uh, should uh, be uh, transferred to the typhoon category within the next uh, 12 hours or so. However, that will be uh, far to your uh, west. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Sunrise Terminator has not yet reached Viola. When it does, uh, several hours from now, you can uh, probably uh, distinguish it uh, uh, from your viewpoint uh, quite readily. Uh, as a matter of fact, it uh, should be uh, of interest uh, to uh, perhaps take some pictures or comment upon it uh, when you uh, do get a chance to see Viola in a few, uh, few hours. So uh, that's about the uh, present uh, weather state and uh, situation for your recovery area. Over. Okay, sounds pretty good. Apollo 11, Houston, over. Go right ahead, Houston. Uh, 11, Houston, uh, we'd like to uh, try an uh, operation on a high, with the uh, high gain array here. Uh, if you would uh, select uh, reacquire and your uh, S-band antenna to high gain, your uh, positions are pitch plus four zero and yaw two seven zero, and uh, then uh, monitor for uh, acquisition. Over. Okay, it's in work. Eleven Houston, uh, we're just now ready to switch from Omni Delta over to your high gain antenna. Can you confirm that uh, you have gone to REAC? Over. Confirm. Real good, Mike. Looks like we picked up about 30 dB on the signal strength. Yeah, it came in quite quickly. Um, however, I'm showing about uh, 240 uh, yaw and about, uh, about zero degrees uh, fish now. Uh, Roger, about 240 and zero. This is Apollo Control at 172 hours 38 minutes. Apollo 11 now 108. 1,669 nautical miles from the Earth, traveling at a speed of 5,534 feet per second. This is Apollo Control at 173 hours 18 minutes. Uh, there are virtually no uh, flight plan activities scheduled at this time. Uh, the spacecraft systems all continue to perform normally and at the present time Apollo 11 is 106,482 uh, nautical miles from the Earth. Uh, velocity is 5,607 feet per second. At 174 hours 24 minutes the spacecraft uh, will be 
approximately halfway between the Earth and the Moon in terms of distance. Uh, be, it will be 102,888 nautical miles from the Earth and the same distance from the Moon. The spacecraft weight at this time is uh, 26,000 pounds. Apollo 11, Houston, over. Go ahead. I just wanted to make sure you fellas hadn't gone back to sleep again. And I uh, also have a little bit of late news here if uh, you'd like to uh, find out what's happened in the last uh, 12, 14 hours. Over. Okay, go ahead. Okie doke. Uh, hot off the uh, press here, we find uh, Juan Carlos was formally designated yesterday, Tuesday, to become General Franco's successor as the Chief of State of Spain and eventual King. Uh, Juan Carlos will be sworn in today as his successor designate. After taking an oath of loyalty to the law and the national movement, Spain's only uh, legal political organization, he uh, will ap apparently be called the Prince of Spain. Uh, House Ways and Means Committee also has agreed yesterday to tax changes affecting oil companies, also banks and utilities, uh, which could add as much as $2 billion per year to the federal revenue. The committee also voted tentatively to change the accounting procedures for telephone, electric, gas, and oil pipeline companies, and to reduce tax benefits of mutual savings and loan institutions. So it looks as if uh, tax reform may be on the way. Uh, looking overseas, we find South Korea's first superhighway linking Seoul with the port of Incheon has uh, been named the Apollo Highway to commemorate your trip. I think we mentioned uh, last night that uh, President Nixon has already started on his round-the-world trip, and today he is in San Francisco on his first stop, which will take him to the US, USS Hornet, uh, from which he'll uh, watch the uh, return of uh, your spacecraft. He plans to visit uh, seven nations, including Romania, during this trip. Uh, he, as I think uh, you also knew, had to miss the All-Star Baseball game uh, yesterday, as it was uh, rained out, but uh, is being played today. The uh, West Coast residents in uh, Seattle, Washington, Portland, Oregon, Vancouver, British Columbia, San Francisco, all plan to make their areas visible to the three of you by lighting their lights between 9 p.m. and midnight tonight, according to the Associated Press. We do have clear weather predicted there so that you may be able to see Christmas lights, porch lights, door lights, and whatever may be turned on. A little closer to home here, uh, back in Memphis, Tennessee, a young lady uh, who is presently tipping the scales at 8 pounds, 2 ounces, uh, was named a module by her parents, Mr. and Mrs. Eddie Lee McGee. It wasn't uh, my idea, said Mrs. McGee, it was my husband. She said she had balked at the name uh, Lunar Module McGee because it didn't sound uh, too good, but apparently they have compromised on just module, over. Oh, uh, did you hear a few chuckles coming from that direction? And uh, we do have a late report on the sports here also. The All-Star Game uh, currently being played. Uh, the present score at the end of the fourth inning has uh, the National League leading the American League by 9-3. to three. So the hitters are having a good day, as you can tell. And uh, rain clouds are over the MSC area at the moment. It uh, began uh, raining here just uh, about ten, 10 minutes ago, and uh, last report we were having a pretty heavy deluge. So uh, that's it from the news front uh, for the afternoon here, Apollo 11, over. Thank you very much, uh, Owen. I think uh, my yard could use some water. Uh, that's uh, very true. I've forgotten exactly how many days it did go, Buzz, but something like 30 days without rain, and uh, we uh, can't appreciate uh, the rain we're getting right now. Yeah, that was Neil. Buzz, there. I wonder if you could find out when the last time my lawn was cut. Over. Uh, that might uh, be a little more difficult to find out. I'm not sure uh, whether the uh, whether Mike uh, is uh, ready to admit when he last did the job, but I'll look into that for you. Well, he'll tell you. He's got a new mower. <laughs> Roger. Ask my chinch buck how they're doing. 
Well, I'm not sure about uh, yours. I can let you know about my own, and the report isn't very good. Owen Gary, it is the capsule communicator here in Mission Control at this time. This is Apollo Control at 173 hours, 43 minutes. Apollo 11 now, 105,165 nautical miles from Earth. The velocity continuing to increase gradually up to 5,652 feet per second. The cabin temperature in spacecraft has been running uh, around 62 degrees. And uh, coming up within the next hour, Apollo 11 will be crossing the midway point in distance. Uh, that to occur at 174 hours, 24 minutes, and 7 seconds. There will be a briefing at uh, 3 p.m. Central Daylight Time in the Building 1 Auditorium on the Lunar Receiving Laboratory. 11 Houston, over. Go ahead. Uh, Roger. Uh Joan wasn't home right now, Buzz, but uh, Janice reports the grass is getting pretty high, and I would estimate that it's uh, going to be close to your knees by the time you get out of quarantine, over. Okay, I'll have to schedule a little discussion after I get back. All right, and uh, no, report for, no report from the chinch bug there, Mike. Well, they're sort of taciturn little fellas. They don't say much. They just chomp away. Concur on that. Which is about what we're doing up here. Now uh, we concur on that, too. I'm not used to all this, but I'm sitting here right beside you. Breakfast was magnificent as usual. I had sliced peaches, sausage patties, two cups of coffee, and I forget all what else. Uh, that does sound uh, pretty good. As a matter of fact, I'm uh, way overdue for a meal myself here. I could use some of that. Why don't you get milk to give you five minutes off and grab a hamburger? Uh, I suggested that a while ago. He was pointing out about uh, the weight problem here. Got to keep uh, the calories low, so uh, I better stand by without it. Houston, Apollo 11, we've, we've been doing a little flight planning for Apollo 12 up here. Uh, Roger, go ahead. Uh, we're trying to calculate how much uh, spaghetti and meatballs we can get on board for Albane. Uh, I'm not sure the uh, spacecraft will take that much extra weight. I, uh, uh, have you made any estimates? It'll be close. That last comment came from uh, Mike Collins referring to Al Bean, who is the uh, lunar module pilot for Apollo 12. 11 uh, Houston, uh, the medics at the next console report that uh, the shrew is one animal which can eat six times its own body weight every 24 hours. Uh, this may be a satisfactory baseline for your uh, spaghetti calculations on Al Bean, over. <laughs> okay, thank you. That, that didn't work. Houston Apollo 11. It was slightly colder in here last night than it has been on any previous night. Uh, does ECOM uh, notice any change in uh, his data or any explanation for that? Uh, Roger. Uh, stand by just a moment. We'll got to check some temperatures. Up until last night, it was, uh, if anything, a little on the warm side at night. Last night, it was uh, on the chilly side. Uh, Roger there. We'll uh, run down uh, the uh, temperatures uh, for the two nights. Oh, it's no big thing. This is a matter of interest. Roger. And how'd you like the uh, command module RCS temperatures? Uh, 11 Houston, uh, they all look very good. The uh, lowest temperature was uh, 40 degrees, and uh, we're uh, taking a look at your cabin temperatures now. Yeah, we agree on the uh, CMRCS. No uh, heater is going to be required by a country mile. Uh, we uh, think that's correct. 
We don't like those heaters anyway, working off the direct coil. Roger. Peculiar thing going on the uh, platform alignment is that uh, when I really take my time and do a very slow, careful, precise job of marking, I'm getting about the same star angle difference as when I'm doing it in PTC and have to do a hurried uh, rush job with relatively poor tracking. Uh, star angle differences uh, seem insensitive and almost uh, make me believe there's a, a very small bias error somewhere in the uh, section. Uh, Roger, uh, 11. Uh, perhaps the uh, three degrees per second just isn't that, that much of a bother, over. Well, he's really trying to explain why you can't get all zeros. Yeah, that's, uh, I think Buzz is probably right. Uh, matter of fact, one time uh, I made a mark which I thought was a little bit in error, but I thought, well, heck, I'll go ahead and see how it works out anyway, and I got uh, five zeros that time. And when I have uh, thought everything was exactly precisely on, I have consistently been getting .01. Al Roger, uh, apparently it pays to hurry. I usually do. The visibility through the uh, telescope has been uh, very poor. It's, uh, I would say, even worse than the simulator is right now. It requires a uh, long periods of dark adaptation, which uh, most times are most inconvenient, so it's really uh, a tremendous asset to keep the platform powered up at all times and to keep uh, it tweaked within the capability of the Sexton uh, field of view. I understand, Mike. Uh, 11 uh, Houston, uh, checking your uh, temperatures. Uh, it does look like the uh, spacecraft may have uh, cooled down uh, perhaps uh, two or three degrees in the last 24 hours, and uh, that sounds uh, to be consistent uh, with your report on the uh, comfort level there. Over. Okay. Is that a, uh, a limb off phenomenon? Uh, 11 uh, Houston, it looks like we'll have to think a little more about that uh, as to whether it's a limb off or. Uh, uh, some effect of being out of lunar orbit, we don't know, so uh, we'll have to uh, puzzle before we can give a better answer. Okay. Roger. Well, if the systems guys have anything they want to chase down, we'll be happy to give you any readings or reports or what have you. Uh, Roger, uh, we'll uh, uh, think about that and see if there aren't some other tests to be usefully performed here. Okay. Uh, 11 uh, Houston, I'll uh, be turning things over to the green Capcom at this time and uh, see you on the ground tomorrow. Okay, uh, Owen, I want to thank you and uh, all Purple Maroons up there for a uh, good job helping Apollo 11. Thank you, sir. Thanks for all of you. We really appreciate it. Great job, you guys. Roger up. Astronaut Bruce McCandless has just relieved Owen Garriott as capsule communicator. At uh, 174 hours 14 minutes, Apollo 11 is 103,440 nautical miles from Earth, traveling at a speed of 5,713 feet per second. Apollo 11, this is Houston, over. Go ahead, Houston, Apollo 11. 11, Mrs. Houston, with reference to your subjective evaluation that it felt cooler inside the spacecraft last night, we reported earlier that we did indeed see a drop of about three degrees over the previous night. Looking back, it appears that the crew of Apollo 10 reported similar feelings during the translunar and trans-Earth coast phases. We were wondering if you could give us any indication of the relative amounts of free or condensed water in the cabin last night and the night before from which we could infer humidity over. I think that might be a little bit difficult to do. We're going to take a look in the tunnel now. 
it does seem as though uh, during the dirt uh, we've had a little bit more moisture uh, in the tunnel. Uh, of course, it's the lamp hasn't been there, then we did uh, transfer. Uh, Roger, we were more curious about the relative amount of moisture between, say, last night and the night before, both of which would have the limb missing. Uh, there's more moisture in the tunnel now than there has been at any previous time. Uh, subjectively, we have uh, been unable to determine any change in uh, any buildup in humidity. There appears to be no moisture any other place in the spacecraft, for example. The uh, windows are not fogging or... Uh, and the various other cool spots around the spacecraft, uh, all of them appear to be completely dry. This is Houston. Roger, thank you. This is Apollo Control at 174 hours, 35 minutes. Apollo 11 now, 102,286 nautical miles from Earth. Uh, we cross the halfway point in terms of distance at uh, 100. 74 hours, 24 minutes, and 7 seconds. The uh, briefing on the Lunar Receiving Laboratory is scheduled to begin at MSC in Building 1. Uh, we'll tape record any conversations with the spacecraft, play those back immediately following the press conference. This is Apollo Control at 174 hours, 36 minutes. This is Apollo Control at 175 hours, 42 minutes. Apollo 11 is now 98,512 nautical miles from the Earth. Uh, the velocity 5,892 feet per second. During the preceding press conference, we accumulated about seven minutes of taped conversation, which we'll play back for you now. How are the greens today, Bruce? Oh, the greens are in good shape. The uh, actual green team has been here for several hours, but uh, we're dogging the watch down here to position Ron for entry over. All right, I understand. Did Dave Reed get to explain the lunar sphere at the press conference? No, but uh, your comments about Phil Schaeffer and the explanations were quoted in the paper last night. Uh oh. Do you want to say anything more while you're on the line? He's right. He's absolutely right. How was old flight, uh, Bruce? Did he ever let you go get a cup of coffee when we were over on the backside? Oh, things have been going pretty smoothly down here. He's really not that hard to get along with. Yeah, he must be mellowing. Well, we've only got two of them back here right now. They always used to make me sit at the console uh, through the backside pass, just for training. Uh, the word we have here is that uh, that was because whenever you came back, you had to be retrained. Touche. Houston Apollo 11, as a matter of curiosity, on our 70 millimeter cameras, we figure we exposed around 300 in the LEM and around 1,000 in the command module, and both cameras, or all the 70 millimeter cameras, work just fine. Okay, very good. Thank you. Apollo 11, this is Houston, over. Thank you. 11, this is Houston. Do you all have changed Lima to your entry operations checklist dated July 23, over? July 23. I'm not sure if we, uh, hung around long enough to pick that one up. Okay, if you've got the entry operations checklist handy, then I'll pass it up to you, over. How can you make changes after this, though? Trade on me, June? Negative. Just came up today, over. Oh, you're the first to get to us. Go ahead. Okay, on page 6-1, of the entry out checklist down toward the bottom after main deploy push button. We have three additional steps we'd like you to accomplish. The intent of this is to 
redu to reduce the oxygen pressure in your manifold and to eliminate the oxygen bleed flow through the potable and wastewater tanks during descent. Over. Okay, we've got the uh, finish one up. Okay, now at the bottom you've got uh, 10,000 feet main parachute deploy, main deploy push button push <clears throat> within one second. And after that step, we'd like you to insert surge tank O2 valve off, repress package valve off, and direct O2 valve open. You copy? Okay, down to the bottom after main deploy, push button push, search tank O2 off, repress package valve off, direct O2 on. Roger, and then down at the very bottom of page 6 2, where you see direct O2 off, verify, delete that step completely over. Roger. And for record purposes, this would be change Lima. Over. Okay, we got it. Uh, now how far open do you want the direct O2 to, uh, to be open at this point? And I guess you want to uh, just leave it open from that point on? Uh, Roger, it should go all the way open, and you can just leave it on from that point on. The intent is to completely depressurize the oxygen manifold over. Roger, copy. Apollo 11, this is Houston for your information. The All-Star game has just ended with the National League winning 9-3 to over American. Over. Roger, thank you. And I have a message uh, here for Mike that says, quote, all the chinch bugs are gone, unquote, over. Having done their job, I guess. Well, along with one tree, it turns out. Yeah, I, I heard about that. That was right before the flight. Right, that uh, big storm. This is Apollo Control. That uh, brings us up to date with the uh, tape-recorded conversation. We'll continue to stand by for any further communications with the spacecraft. Uh, during the uh, previous conversations, you heard Mike Collins toss a couple of good-natured barbs at uh, Flight Director Cliff Charlesworth. Collins was a capsule communicator on Charlesworth's shift during the Apollo 8 mission. At uh, 175 hours, 51 minutes, Apollo 11 is 98,034 nautical miles from the Earth. Apollo 11, this is Houston. Are you still up there? Over. I uh, hope yeah, we are, but not quite as far as we were a while ago. Roger, we concur. We just wanted to make sure that we still had good calm with you. Okay. For general information, 11, you are now 905,970 miles out from the Earth. Over. Okay, we're in our own backyard. Say again? Right in our own backyard. Roger that. Starting to come downhill a little bit now. What's our velocity? The velocity is 5,991 feet per second. Thank you. And you are indeed coming downhill. This is Apollo Control at 176 hours, 44 minutes. Apollo 11 now 94,961 nautical miles from Earth. The velocity has just gone over uh, the 6,000 foot per uh, second mark. We're at 6,029 feet per second. The next item scheduled on the flight plan 
is a television transmission that's scheduled to occur at a ground elapsed time of 177 hours 30 minutes which would be 6.02 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Among the uh, clocks counting down or up to and from significant events uh, here in Mission Control, we have one counting down to entry. And that clock now shows 18 hours, 18 minutes, and 12 seconds until entry. Uh, Reentry is scheduled to begin based on uh, no further mid-course corrections at 195 hours, 3 minutes, 5 seconds. At this time, it appears that mid-course correction 7, if it were done, uh, would only require 2 tenths of a foot per second. Uh, based on current tracking, we wouldn't expect to have to do mid-course correction 7. However, the uh, tracking will be continued and a decision on mid-course correction 7 uh, will not be made until uh, closer to the time of the maneuver. Apollo 11, this is Houston. Over. Go ahead, Houston. Roger, 11, I've got a flight plan update for you to give you uh, an optimum attitude for the Earth in the number one window and the moon in number five window. Over. Ready, copy. Roger, your attitude will be roll 12 degrees, pitch 270 degrees, yaw 0 degrees. I gain antenna angles, pitch plus 14. Yaw, 263. Over. Roger, I right, copy. Roll 012, pitch 270. Y, uh, yaw 0, high gain antenna, pitch plus 14, and yaw 263. Roger. And when coming out of PTC, uh, you might be advised that your dead band has been collapsed, so to follow the checklist items. Over. Roger right, that. Now this is Apollo Control at 177 hours, 11 minutes. Uh, our network controller advises that uh, we're starting to get uh, some semblance of uh, TV signal from the spacecraft. Uh, we suspect uh, we may be getting some checkout. Uh, we'll continue to stand by and uh, be prepared to take whatever sent. 11, this is Houston. We're receiving a black signal from you right now, but uh, we are getting TV. Over. This is Apollo Control. Uh, the network controller now reports that the TV signal is down, uh, apparently having been turned off, and uh, we suspect that what we had was a test of the system by the crew. The uh, television transmission from the spacecraft is scheduled to begin at 177 hours, 30 minutes or about two minutes past six Central Daylight Time. At uh, the present time, Apollo 11 is 93,218 nautical miles from the Earth. Control zone, contact net one. Control zone, Houston, contact net one. Control zone, contact. Roger, check for King, please. Sir, uh, Roger. Goldstone, Houston, contact. Goldstone, contact, 100% King. Uh, Roger, thank you. I'm remoting that one now. Uh, Roger. Apollo 11, this is Houston, over. Go ahead. From signal strength indications, it appears we may be locked up on a side lobe with a high gain antenna. We'd like you to go into wide beam width for about 15 seconds and then back to narrow over. All right. This is Apollo Control at 177 hours, 30 minutes. Uh, we're standing by at this time to receive television pictures from the uh, Apollo 11 spacecraft. A short while ago, uh, we received a test transmission and apparently uh, everything is functioning normally. We were receiving uh, television signal from Goldstone relayed on through to Houston. 
we'll continue to stand by for the uh, uh, TV. That's affirmative, 11. Yeah, all set for TV. Roger, we're all set whenever you're ready to send. Okay. Okay, you're coming through loud and clear now, 11, with your patch. We have black and white signals. We should have the conversion up shortly. this evening. back on with Mike in the middle of the screen there. Roger, this trip of ours to the moon may have looked to you simple or easy. I'd like to assure you that that has not been the case. The Saturn V rocket, which put us into orbit, is an incredibly complicated piece of machinery, every piece of which works flawlessly. This computer up above my head has a 38,000 word vocabulary, each word of which has been very carefully chosen to be of the utmost value to us, the crew. This switch, which I have in my hand now, has over 300 counterparts in the command module alone, of this one single switch design. In addition to that, there are a myriad of circuit breakers, levers, rods, and other associated controls. The SPS engine, our large rocket engine, on the aft end of our service module, must have performed flawlessly or we would have been stranded in lunar orbit. 
The parachute up above my head must work perfectly tomorrow or we will plummet into the ocean. We have always had confidence that all this equipment will work and work properly, and we continue to have confidence that it will do so for the remainder of the flight. All this is possible only through the blood, sweat, and tears of a number of people. First, the American workmen who put these pieces of machinery together at the factory. Second, the painstaking work done by the various test teams during the assembly and the retest after assembly. And finally, the people at the manned spacecraft center, both in management, in mission planning, in flight control, and last but not least, in crew training. This operation is somewhat like the periscope of a submarine. All you see is the three of us, but beneath the surface are thousands and thousands of others. And to all those, I would like to say thank you very much. This is Houston. We're getting a good picture of Buzz now, but no voice modulation. And would you open up the f-stop on the TV camera? Uh, try a 22, please. That appears to be a lot better now. We're still not receiving Buzz's audio. Good evening. I'd like to discuss with you a few of the more symbolic aspects of the flight of our mission, Apollo 11. As we've been discussing the events that have taken place in the past two or three days here on board our spacecraft, we've come to the conclusion that this has been far more than three men on a voyage to the moon. More still than the efforts of a government and industry team more even than the efforts of one nation. We feel that this stands as a symbol of the insatiable curiosity of all mankind to explore the unknown. Neil's statement the other day upon first setting foot on the surface of the moon, this is a small step for a man, but a great leap for mankind, I believe sums up these feelings very nicely. We accepted the challenge of going to the moon. The acceptance of this challenge was inevitable. The relative ease with which we carried out our mission, I believe, is a tribute to the timeliness of that acceptance. Today, I feel we're fully capable of accepting expanded roles in the exploration of space. In retrospect, we have all been particularly pleased with the call signs that we very laboriously chose for our spacecraft, Columbia and Eagle. We've been particularly pleased with the emblem of our flight, depicting the U.S. Eagle, bringing the universal symbol of peace from the Earth, from the planet Earth, to the moon, that symbol being the olive branch. It was our overall crew choice to deposit a replica of this symbol on the moon. Personally, in reflecting the events of the past several days, a verse from the Psalms comes to mind to me. When I consider the heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him?
The responsibility for this flight lies first with with history and with the giants of science who have preceded this effort. Next to the American people who have, through their will, indicated their desire. Next to four administrations and their congresses for implementing that will. And then to the agency and industry team that built our spacecraft. The Saturn, the Columbia, the Eagle, and the little EMU, the spacesuit and backpack that was our small spacecraft out on the lunar surface. We'd like to give a special thanks to all those Americans who built those spacecraft, who did the construction, the design, the test, and put their their heart and all their abilities in, into those crafts. To those people, tonight we give a special thank you. And to all the other people that are listening and watching tonight, God bless you. Good night from Apollo 11. This is Houston. We're getting a zoom view out the window now. of the Earth came from 91,371 nautical miles out in space. After a uh, brief and uh, sincere and uh, moving transmission from the Apollo 11 spacecraft, uh, this is Apollo Control at 177 hours, 45 minutes. You can crank up PTC again, Mike, anytime you like. And uh, might add, I thought that was a mighty fine TV presentation. Uh, certainly nothing I can add to it from down here. All right. Apollo 11, this is Houston, over. Go ahead. Okay, 11, I've got a few small items here. One flight plan update and uh, some entry photography information. If you're ready to copy over. Go ahead. Roger at one eight zero hours five zero minutes GET. We should like to delete your oxygen fuel cell purge. Okay. And on the entry photography. If you're going to use a fresh <coughs> magazine of color interior film, we recommend the following exposure settings. F11 at 1 250th, 6 frames per second. Focus on 7 feet for the fireball. F2.0, 1 60th of a second, 6 frames per second. Focus on five zero feet when the chute's open. If you're using a magazine, part of which has already been used for interior shots, we recommend F-16 at one five hundredth of a second, six frames per second. Focus on seven feet for the fireball. F-2.8, one 
sixtieth of a second. Six frames per second. Focus on five zero feet when the parachute's open. And we would like to know the magazine number that you're intending to use when you have a chance, over. Okay, uh, I think we've got those. We will be using uh, a fresh one, and it'll be uh, uh, color interior. Uh, Roger, when you get it, uh, when you get it out, we'd like to have the number of the magazine or the letter of the magazine relayed down. Okay, and we were thinking that uh, we might want to run some of this at 12 frames a second. I don't think we can get everything from 0.5 to uh, down. That'll only give us about uh, 7.8 minutes and uh, 6 frames and uh, double that. Uh, I guess maybe uh, just an occasional uh, burst of 12 frames would be what we'd want in the rest of it today, so uh, This is Houston. That plan sounds fine with us, Neil. Okay. And lastly, we'd like to know if your stowage configuration for entry is going to conform to the nominal. Uh, the retros down here are anxious to get an accurate CG computed for you and in particular where the uh, levos are being stowed over. Okay, uh, we think we're going to put the uh, levers and the helmets in the hatch bag, uh, and we'll let you know any other uh, non-standard stowage locations that we uh, complete this evening. This is Houston, Roger out. Houston, about 11. Go ahead, 11. All right, so the magazine we'll be using uh, for entry tomorrow is Magazine M. Over. Uh, do you understand? Magazine M is in Mike. That's right. Thank you, Ed. Apollo 11, this is Houston, your friendly green team going off for the night and going off for the last time, we wish to bid you a good night and Godspeed. Thank you. We appreciate all that fine work done by the by the green team and uh, we'll be thanking you in person when we get back. Roger, we'll see you on the ground. Really enjoyed working with all of you. Thanks very much. Over. Roger. As usual, all you greenies. They're all smiles down here, even the trench. This is Apollo Control. Here in the Mission Operations Control Room of Mission Control Center, the white team of flight controllers under Flight Director Gene Krantz settling in for the 10-hour shift ahead until 5 a.m. Green Team Flight Director Cliff Charlesworth is now en route to the Houston Apollo News Center, and shortly we'll be there for his change of shift press conference, estimating about uh, 10 minutes for his arrival. We'll continue to monitor the Apollo 11 air ground circuit should the communications resume. Standing by at 178 hours 25 minutes, ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control. Apollo 11 now 88,442 nautical miles out from Earth, approaching at a velocity of 6,299 feet per second. Change of shift press conference with uh, Green Team Flight Director Chil Cliff Charlesworth, due to begin any moment now in the NASA Apollo News Center Auditorium. And at 178 hours 34 minutes ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control, 179 hours, 9 minutes, ground elapsed time. During the past half hour, there have been some exchanges between spacecraft communicator Bruce McCandless here in Mission Control and the crew of Apollo 11. One item, they're trying to sort out uh, and troubleshoot some difficulties with the biomedical sensors attached to the chest of Command Module Pilot Mike Collins. 
let's uh, play back the accumulated tape, and hopefully by the time it's ended, we will have picked up communications again, and we'll rejoin the conversation live. Roll tape, please. Apollo 11, this is Houston, over. Roger, how's our thruster firing activity? Uh, we're about ready to crank up PTC if you are. Roger, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Apollo 11, this is Houston, over. Go ahead, Houston. 11, we'd like you to shift to an omni antenna configuration at the present time. We're requesting the S-band antenna omni switch to Bravo and the S-band antenna omni switch to omni. The high gain antenna track in manual, pitch minus five zero, yaw two seven zero, over. Roger, uh, I'll do that right now. Roger, and if Mike has a minute, we'd like to and do a little bit of troubleshooting. It seems he's either uh, flat chested or something because we've lost respiration rate on the biomed telemetry. That is the ZPN trace down here is flat. I used to save a little bit ago. Hold on one. Okay, uh, all the blasted wires are all connected, is all I know. Okay, Mike, we had a request that you disconnect the yellow connector from the signal conditioner and verify that it looks okay, reconnect it, and then if you would check the two electrodes that are placed, one on each side of your lower rib cage, over. I'll bet you there's a smile on Charles for his face. Uh, Cliff is not on right now. Gene Kranz just uh, released him a few minutes ago. Roger that. All those wires and things look normal up here. So Roger, Mike. We could see variations on our trace as you connected and disconnected, but uh, the medics still don't have a signal. Looks like you're sending us a message of some sort. All right. I promise to let you know if I stop breathing. Apollo 11, Apollo 11, this is Houston, broadcasting in the blind, request Omni Bravo, request Omni Bravo, over. Apollo 11, this is Houston, communication reestablished. Apollo 11, this is Houston. Will you confirm you are in Omni Bravo? Over. Uh, okay, that ought to give it to you. Roger out. Apollo 11, this is Houston. Mike, we're still getting a flat trace on you for the impedance pneumograph. Uh, before you turn in this evening, you might try putting some fresh paste in the sensors. And if that doesn't work, the medics have agreed to forget about it. Over. Uh, Mike's off a loop right now. I'll, uh, I'll convey the message. Okay, thank you. Here's the Apollo M-Sing-M. Uh, Roger, Mike. The trace on your uh, respiration rate is still flat. Uh, if you have time this evening before turning in, it was suggested that you try putting some fresh paste in the two electrodes that go on the side of your lower rib cage. And if that doesn't work, just give up on it. This is Apollo Control. Columbia now 85,198 nautical miles out from Earth. Approaching Earth at a velocity of 6,443 feet per second. Still standing by for resumption of air to ground communications, which may be difficult in as much as Capcom is leaving the room. We'll continue to monitor air ground as the crew prepares for their pre sleep checklist. 
sets up the passive thermal control mode and sacks out for about a 10 hour rest period in preparation for tomorrow's entry and subsequent recovery in the mid-Pacific aboard the carrier Hornet. Now hove two on the aiming point or near the aiming point Standing by at 179 hours, 27 minutes ground elapsed time. This is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control. Columbia now 82,972 nautical miles out from Earth. Traveling inbound at 6,546 feet per second. There have been no further communications with the crew of Apollo 11 in the last half hour or so. At this time they should be going through their pre-sleep checklist or possibly uh, their evening meal before beginning a seven hour rest period. down the circuit at this time and come back when and if the conversation resumes prior to uh, the time the crew begins their rest period. At 180 hours, three minutes, ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Delta Launch Control. We're now at T-minus 13 minutes, 53 seconds and counting. We're now receiving some preliminary status checks. We have a report from spacecraft that spacecraft status is ready. Also a report from the superintendent of range operations that the range is ready to support. As we look at the range status board here in the mission director's center, all stations are showing green. Liquid oxygen topping has now reached one, or liquid oxygen loading has now reached 100% and will continue to top down to the final seconds before launch. The liquid oxygen is stored and transferred at minus 297 degrees Fahrenheit, so there is some boil-off which does occur. This boil-off is vented to the outside air, and uh, these vents will be closed just prior to launch. The tanks will be pressurized, thus ensuring a full LOX load. Right now, we're also monitoring the helium and nitrogen pressure in the systems on the second stage, these systems used to pressurize the fuel systems on the second stage. Helium is maintained at approximately 4,350 PSIG and the nitrogen at 4,000 PSIG. We'll continue to monitor these. We have one more built-in hold at the countdown that's coming at the T-minus 5-minute mark, and it will be for 5 minutes duration. Now at T-minus 12 minutes 30 seconds and counting, this is Delta Launch Control. This is Delta Launch Control. We're at T-minus 7 minutes, 50 seconds, and continuing to count in our countdown for the Intelsat 3. However, it has been noted that a nitrogen regulator on the second stage is malfunctioning. This nitrogen regulator controls the nitrogen going into the attitude control system. If the problem cannot be solved, this is a no-go item. We'll continue to work the problem and to look at it. As we proceed with the count, the countdown will continue to the T-minus five minute mark, at which time a built-in hold is scheduled. During that built-in hold, the overall situation will be evaluated, and we'll bring you the word on that just as soon as we receive it here in the Mission Director's Center. Now at T-minus seven minutes, 10 seconds and counting, this is Delta Launch Control. This is Delta Launch Control. We're now T-minus five minutes in holding. This is our plan built-in hold. We'll take advantage of this hold time to make a further examination of that nitrogen regulator aboard the second stage of the Delta Launch Vehicle. This nitrogen lake regulator is malfunctioning at this time. It's used for the, to regulate the nitrogen which flows to the attitude control system in the second stage. We'll be standing by here in the Mission Director Center for a go-no-go no go on that system. 
If the nitrogen regulator continues to malfunction, it will be a no-go item. We'll stand by here during the built-in hold, and we'll bring you word as soon as we receive it in the Mission Director's Center. T minus five minutes in holding. This is Delta Launch Control. This is Delta Launch Control. We're at T minus five minutes in holding. We've just received word from Launch Director Robert Gray that the launch has been scrubbed for tonight. The reason for the scrub being the nitrogen regulator aboard the second stage, which is malfunctioning at this time. This nitrogen regulator regulates the nitrogen going into the attitude control system on the second stage. We will attempt to recycle for countdown tomorrow. Checks must be made with the range to ensure that we can get a range clearance for tomorrow night launch. If we do, the launch window will be the same tomorrow night, 10 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, 2 11, 10 p.m. This is Delta Launch Control. This is Apollo Control, 180 hours, 25 minutes, ground elapsed time. We have some four minutes accumulated tape in recent uh, transmissions between Columbia and the ground. We'll uh, roll these tapes at this time. How about the number five window? Uh, 
Stand by a minute. Roger, for the number five window, that'll be every time you pass two, three, zero degrees and roll, over. Beautiful, thank you. You guys are on your toes down there. Must have a new, new star chart. Must have a new, new star chart, huh? Oh, we've got a fresh, fresh FAO here. Honey circle, Houston contact, net one. Voice check. Honey, Tucker, we'll read you loud and clear. All right, Roger, read you the same. Houston, Apollo 11. How much longer do you want to keep charging uh, battery B? And this is Houston, and nominally we're looking for about another hour and a half, but what we'd like to do is continue charging until shortly before you turn in for the night, over. That'll be fine. Are you going to want to charge A again at all? Negative 11. Okay. 11, this is Houston. At about 180.45, we'll be handing over from Goldstone to Honeysuckle, and I'm handing over to Charlie. I'll see you when you get back, over. Okay, Bruce, uh, good night, thank you. Roger, good night. Thank you very much, Bruce. Uh, been a pleasure working with you. Have a nice trip down. This is Apollo Control. The uh, weird noise has been reported by uh, network controller is not being on the downlink from the spacecraft. Now it stopped. Let's leave the circuit open here in the period prior to the time the crew goes to sleep and monitor the air ground circuit. This is Apollo Control. We've been standing by now for quite some time for resumption of communications, but uh, apparently no one is saying anything tonight. Apollo 11 now 78,134 nautical miles out from Earth, approaching at 6,785 feet per second. And at 181 hours 17 minutes, Round elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control. We've uh, had one brief communication from Apollo 11. Spacecraft communicator Bruce McCandless is out of the room. The assistant flight director Chuck Lewis went down to the console to talk. Uh, let's play that tape back and rejoin live uh, when the conversation picks up again. Houston, Apollo 11, over. 
Apollo 11, Houston, go ahead. Uh, Roger, Houston, uh, for retro, I have the uh, anticipated location of all the entry stowage, and uh, I suggest you, you pull out the entry checklist and we'll go through uh, those maps in the front of it. Apollo 11, uh, Houston, uh, could you stand by uh, just a few minutes? Uh, Charlie and Flight are out uh, getting a weather briefing. They'll be back shortly. Say again. Say again. Is this on? No, this uh, is Chuck Lewis. Uh, Charlie Duke is out with uh, Flight getting a weather briefing right now. Okay. You're not drinking coffee, I know. <laughs> They'll be back momentarily. I stand corrected. That's Charlie Duke on the Capcom slot. Uh, Bruce McCandless in the last half hour has been relieved. Uh, Charlie is likely to respond now. Uh, he's putting on his headset. We'll listen in. Hello, Apollo 11. Houston, over. Roger, Houston, Apollo 11. Uh, did you get the word on the entry checklist? Uh, Roger, Mike. We sure did. Uh, we're ready to talk about it if you are over. I think the quickest thing is go through page by page the uh, first part of the entry checklist where it has a map. Starting on the page with compartment L2 and L3. Are you with me? Roger, with you. Okay, L2 is as shown, L3 is as shown. There's about half the food remaining in L3. Roger. Where it says, where it says note, the CMP PGA uh, is located in the L-shaped bag with the other two PGAs. The LEM shield was jettisoned with the, or correction, the uh, CMP's uh, helmet shield was jettisoned with the LEM. And his helmet and gloves, instead of being in the sleep restraint, are in the hatch bag. Okay, let's see. Now, your PGA is in the L-shaped bag with the other two PGAs. And your helmet and gloves are in the L-shaped bag instead of the sleep restraint. Uh, the, the helmet and gloves are in the hatch bag, the great big bag that's underneath the left-hand couch that you put the uh, hatch in. Uh, right, I thought I, that's what I copied. Uh, okay, go ahead. Okay, the next page is identical. It's a nitpick and point at R1. We got the entry checklist. Other than that, it's identical. And the third page has got some changes. Go ahead. In uh, A1. Are you with me? I'm over there in compartment A1 now. Go ahead, Mike. Over. Department A1, uh, the 16 millimeter magazine uh, will be located in window number four. Instead of five tissue dispensers, uh, there's only one of them left. Uh, in compartment U3, the 16 millimeter bracket is on window four. In the PGA bag, uh, add the uh, CMP's PGA plus add two LCGs. In compartment A8, delete two LCGs, add one PPK, making a total of four, and add 10 pounds of LEM miscellaneous equipment. We told you five the other day, we think 10 is probably closer, over. Copy. Ready for the next page? Right, go ahead, Mike. And the next page in compartment B1, we estimate about 15% of that food is remaining. In B2, uh, we took PPK out of there and put trash in it. Uh, in B3, the 16 millimeter cable, the 18 millimeter lens, and the right angle mirror are on window number four. And that, sir, brings you all up to date. 
Roger. How about the levers, uh, Mike? Uh, where'd you put those? Over. Now they're in the uh, hatchback. Roger. Stand by. Uh, the only, our only concern, Eleven, is with the stuff you got in the hatchback. That's a pretty big bulk between you and AH, and. Uh, We'd like to talk about uh, moving that over to the sleeper train. If you'll stand by, I'll verify that over. Okay. Houston, our recommendation on the uh, gear you got in the helmet bag, uh, correct, in the hatch ship bag, would be to remove uh, that stuff and put it in the sleep restraint under the right couch. The reason is that the hatch bag straps are only uh, configured for zero G, and it's a pretty difficult job getting it latched down. Uh, with the, the gear in the sleep restraint, it's... Uh, pretty standard uh, latch down procedure and you can also use the uh, beta cord that you have on board. You concur, over. Yeah, we'll look at it, Charlie, but you know. Roger, and I've got a couple other things, Mike. We need to uh, terminate battery B charge at this time. And also, the uh, weather is clobbering in at our targeted uh, landing point uh, due to uh, a scattered thunderstorm. Uh, we don't want to tangle with one of those, so we're going to uh, move the, your aim point uh, uprange, uh, correction to be downrange, to uh, target for a 1,500 nautical mile entry so we can guarantee uh, up uh, lift control. The new coordinates are 13 uh, degrees, 19 minutes north, 169, 10 minutes west. Uh, the weather in that area is super. We got uh, 2,000 scattered, uh, 8,000 scattered with uh, 10 miles visibility and uh, six foot seas. And the Hornet is sitting in great position to get to uh, that targeted position, over. This is Apollo Control. To re recap briefly the conversation a few moments ago between Charlie Duke and the crew of Columbia because of forecast thunderstorms in the prime recovery area in the mid-Pacific for tomorrow. The uh, Apollo spacecraft's lifting capabilities will be used to stretch the entry path some 215 nautical miles farther downrange toward Hawaii to a new uh, landing point or aiming point with the very rough preliminary coordinates of 13 degrees 19 minutes north by 169 degrees 10 minutes west. These numbers will be refined through the night as the retrofire officer exercises the computer and comes up with more definitive numbers. These will be passed on as they are available. 
Apollo 11 now 75,951 nautical miles out from Earth, approaching at 6,899 feet per second. At 181 hours 50 minutes and standing by on the air ground circuit, this is Apollo Control. Apollo 11, Houston, uh, some of the general last minute uh, updates here. On the entry, we were told you on the camera to uh, set it at 50 feet. Turns out the biggest number on the camera is 25 feet, so uh, just set it at infinity. Over. Roger, Kennedy. Hello, Apollo 11, Houston. We're ready to put you to bed and say good night if uh, you give us your uh, crew status report and verify that you changed out the uh, CO2 canister a moment ago. Over. Stand by. Thank you much. Apollo 11, Houston, it's a good night from the white team for the last time. We'll be off when you wake up in the morning. It's uh, been a pleasure working with you guys. It was a beautiful show from all three of you. We appreciate it very much, and we'll see you when you get out of the LRL. Over. Okay, Charlie, uh, thanks to you and all the white team for a great job down there all the way through. Thank you. Outstanding. Thank appreciate you. Appreciate it very much, Charlie. Thanks. Thanks to you guys, too. In Houston, uh, Mike, you get your chance to landing tomorrow. No go around. All right, you're gonna let me land closer to Hawaii too, aren't you? That's right, sir. said the crew of Apollo 11 is now uh, preparing to get their 10 hours rest and uh, their last night in space here in the control center on one of the 10 by 10 Ida 4 television projectors a drawing has been projected on the screen uh, ribbing Capcom Charlie Duke for his uh, slight error yesterday on the television pass where he mistook the moon for Earth as a spacecraft uh, midway between moon and Earth. And it says, Neil, I just spotted a continent on the moon. Uh, Charlie, the camera's on the Earth now. Apollo 11.
7, now 74,906 nautical miles out from Earth. Approaching at 6,954 feet per second. And at 182 hours, 6 minutes ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control, 182 hours, 10 minutes ground elapsed time. We thought that was all the air to ground for tonight prior to the crew going to sleep, but just a few moments ago there was a brief exchange reporting to Apollo 11 crew that uh, the McDonnell Observatory in far west Texas had the spacecraft in their telescope field of view. Let's roll that tape now and then uh, shut it down again. 11 Houston, we got some word just a moment ago that the McDonnell Observatory is, uh, so they have picked up the spacecraft in their telescope. Over. Outstanding. We uh, have been looking for their laser, uh, but uh, haven't had much luck yet. Roger, we'll pass it on to them, Neil. Thank you. This is Apollo Control. That completes uh, the very brief exchange of a few moments ago. At 182 hours, 11 minutes, ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control, 183 hours, 25 minutes, ground elapsed time. Columbia spacecraft, now 69,520 nautical miles out from Earth. Approaching at 6, 000, uh, as it were, 7,262 feet per second. Crew now in their rest period. Started their sleep period uh, a little over an hour ago. To reiterate the change in landing point, this is a weather avoidance situation where thunderstorms are forecast for the aiming point, the original aiming point in the mid-Pacific. Therefore, after the normal entry interface, the lifting characteristics of the Apollo command module will be used to extend the entry range some 215 nautical miles farther downrange toward Hawaii to a preliminary aiming point. That is, the aiming point may shift around between now and uh, entry, which is some 11 hours, 36 minutes from now. But at any rate, the uh, aiming point as calculated now is some uh, 13 degrees, 19 minutes north latitude by 169 degrees, 10 minutes west uh, longitude. The preliminary time of drogue deploy is 195 hours, 12 minutes. Or as you were, yes, 195 hours, 12 minutes, 4 seconds. And the net extension uh, over the earlier splash time is something like 40 seconds. At 183 hours, 27 minutes ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control.